Mutimu Mupi wale hodimo dene fati. Le tsoche tse hulona. Kaya atume la tapa menya le tati modimo. Te honing ya hao ya mo hao te honing ya poloko. Kaya atume la kashompo le katubro mitati anande matu. Kaya atume la kadipilo tse te zintebo o mabalitiwa mapi. Kamora se piti piti salita si konyana ink ya le hodim. Hanzeri ya hodimo le kase mabaliti wama pilo babu. Wena mudimo wale loko la juda. Mudimo wa israele. Ware babal la ntate anan le mata. Wabea le to la hao la poloko li tire le to huko na konyana ink. Rato kopana mutsutungona o hetwe mpwena mabale duwa mapi. Kika ho mabale duwa mapilo riri ria lebo ha. Ria lebo ha hobali mudimu ya tswana niwe na mabale. Ria lebo ha hore wena o hetile wona hore bebe li muko na hao mabale duwa mapi. Ntatea nan le mata mudimu ya sariba li milatu. Mudimu ya reratang, mudimu ya sabatlen le toka una konyana enti ya le mudimu. Mudimu ya o mutwana habu waka ena are o khokile mora echo. Modi na konta nyuri nyora. Kena mudimu ya o re atumela nguye na tapa menya le zati. Re atumela kate, kwa mudimu re atumela katume ino. Kahari huto kete uri puma na ngele kahari huto na lefati la kajeni mudimu. Resantane, riri halimputa tepo ya kakitari kejeto. 
ntate ya na le matla ha ga thepa le thoke mba re tshepile wena ke ka ho re tsa maleba le ba mabaleti wa mapilo ka ha re ho bo philo bo re bo phina re tsa maleba le ba a ho re re be le motsotso le wena mabaleti wa mapilo ho ba ne re utlwisisa ho re mapilo a bona mabaleti a tshwere ko wena konyana entle ya le godimo ke ka ho re tlanka sompo le tlotlo le tebo go modimo ho ba ne re go ntse go re bolukile tabe go ntse go re bolukile konyana entle ya le godimo ha re tla tlala mo sebetsi o na mabaleti wa mapilo mo sebetsi o gethueng ko wena konyana entle ya le godimo re kopa wena o re tataise modimo Hai be wena o re etela mpile go nyana ke ntle ya le godimo re kopa ke kopa matla ha o motimo ke kopa moya wa ha o halalela motho he o tsama ya ka nna tso setsa le fatsi modimo o ame motho o monde o mong ya ke neng ka ha o tshebeletswe na modimo se ba ke nsa o se seng le se seng mo ba iphumana ngo sona modimo ye o a lahletswe ke tshepo tshepo e tse tsotlolo he modimo ye o tumelo ya ha e foko ลันตุเนเลโกเบเตงยอะนิโอริเลมุจิโมอะตาปุมาเนเมติอะบุพิโนยอะเซนันดิอะปาโรนตาเจนันเนมาตาดิอะปาโรดิเบเตงยอะม
We find our scripture reading this evening from the New Testament, the Gospel of Christ according to St. Luke, chapter 11, reading verse 1 and 2. St. Luke's life is really to hell. Luke chapter 11, reading verse 1 and 2. It reads as follows. Jesus teaching on prayer. One day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. His, he said to them, when you pray, say, our Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. Amen. As we light the candle, we are mindful that we serve the forever omnipresent God, the God who's not limited by time and space, the God who is able to reach each and every corner, wherever we are seated. God who's able to reach even at the darkest of darkest places, where as our, in our human capability, we are not able to reach. So with lighting the candle, it's just a way of symbolizing the presence of God amongst us. We acknowledge, in fact, we, we, we invoke his presence, the Holy Spirit to move amongst us. So as we light this candle, we are mindful again of those who have lost their loved ones. And we say, God himself is the light and he, the darkness therefore cannot overwhelm the light. We continue. Where my leader left off last night, 
embarking on the journey of spiritual learning. We wish to bring only one plight, one plight to God. And that is, we need or we long for a spiritual encounter or spiritual breakthrough with God like never before. Indeed, the word of God says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else shall follow. These efforts, therefore, of this week of spiritual yearning are nothing but to seek to be in, in the presence of God. Our prayer and wish is that he awakens in us a deeper relationship with him. Amen. Mkokeli, Reverend Kamza, Dukshoni P. Kibeti Shompe, Liba Uti Boshe, Bakin in the Unawan. A big thank you to all of you for making time to be with us this evening. The Calvary community and the Methodist connection at large. We are thankful for such an opportunity to have an intimate moment with God. It is the moment that we can never ever take for granted because some have longed for this moment and they did not get the opportunity to see it. Yesterday's program focused on the firstness. Lord, teach us to pray. In that, Reverend Kamza explicitly pointed, he pointed out the fundamental purpose and reasoning or the outcome of prayer. He went further to say a prayer should be habitual. And this we attest in Jesus' response to his disciples. When you pray, it's not if you pray, rather when. Essentially asserting that prayer is not and should not be some go-to option when we have some free time. There's a difference, Batwadi Baka, between teach us to pray and teach us a prayer. In case you and I get confused, let me reiterate the disciples' request. It says, Lord, teach us to pray. And his response, he says, when you pray, you say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. This, 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 this quote, or rather, it's not even a sentence, it, it, it's segmented in, in three ways. I therefore want to first focus on our Father. Have you ever driven a car that is not aligned? And you leave a steering wheel for a second and a car goes off the road. Oh, uh, let, let me bring it closer. Perhaps to some of us who are studying or who are recently studying. Have you ever sent an email with your assignment on the due date only to find out after some few days later that the email address that you have put is actually incorrect. Therefore, the email that you have sent has bounced back and it has been retained. This is precisely what is happening here. 
Jesus is making an realignment. Jesus is setting things straight. He is redirecting that what we are to pray to or who we are to pray to is none other than our father. In actual fact, Jesus does not, I mean, does more than just redirecting, does more than realigning, but Jesus restores the relationship that was lost between God and humanity. He puts things into places of origin through the effect of his atoning work. When the curtain was torn in two, that is when Jesus gave us a direct access that we are to pray directly to our God. Therefore, when he says we need to say our Father, he gives us permission to share with him this Father. Our Father, he has given us the permission to go directly to, to God. He reinstates us into our position of origin, addressing God as the Father. He recalls on the nature of God. He uses, or rather, he refers to an Aramaic word, Abba, which signifies an unreasoning and unwavering trust that a child has in the Father. Jesus employs the teaching method. Teachers will attest with me here. You know, when you want something to sink in, into, in, in your learner's head, you move or you rather employ a method of from known to unknown. In the context of the Jewish, there was a significant role that a father played a role that a father demonstrated in the life of the Jewish. He, he demonstrated a person who cared, a person who was loving, a person who provided, who protected those he loved, a person who provided guidance. Those were the characters of the father. That's why I'm saying he moves or he applies the principle of known to the unknown. He paints a picture or an image that he knows very well that the Jewish will relate to. He paints a picture of something or someone that they know to introduce someone or something that they do not know. That is where the common known that the father germinates. It germinates from the Jewish context that they know a father as the person who cares, a father as the person who loves and protects. He is therefore called the father. So he knew that this is something that they will understand. Remember, he didn't say, they didn't say, teach us the prayer. He said, they said rather, teach us to pray. Subsequently, as the sons and daughters of the father, we are to pray to no one but to our father. Immediately, when you call someone my father, when you call someone a father, it means that there's a personal relationship there's a paternal relationship between a father and a child in order for someone or something to be ascribed the common noun, the father or the name, the father asserts that that person is a creator. That is what makes a father. There's a communication of life and likeness. It is natural that a father gives life and gives likeness. Listen to this. If we dare 
call him the father. That signifies that we are to be like him, not only in certain instances, but we are to be like him physically. We are to be like him emotionally, spiritually, and otherwise. That is the likeness that we get from the Father, simply because we are born of him. Simply because we are born of the Father. Remember I said, Jesus reinstated us into our original position. So we are born of the Father. I always hear people saying, I'm a direct photocopy of my father. And therefore, I am not amazed when I read this scripture because this says to me that the reason I have the image of my earthly father is because I am born of him. Therefore, my father did not just give me life, but he gave me his likeness as well. As a result, the reason, in fact, this is the reason that Jesus says, where God has given life, he will give food. Where God has given life, he will give food. Let me tell you about our father. Even though as the children, as the sons and daughters of the most high, when we forget about our duty and responsibility that is upon us, our father does not forget about his duty and responsibility. That's why Jesus said, when he gave likeness, he gives food. That is our father. That is our father. Hence the question is asked that is there anyone among you who if your child asks for bread that you will give him a stone? Is there anyone among you when your child asks for fish and you give her a snake? So it's not me. It's not me who's asking that question. It's not me actually who, who, who gives this response. Listen to what the Bible says. It says further, if you then who are evil, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good, good, good things to those who ask him? How much more will our father in heaven give good things to those who ask him. Our father responds, responds to our persistence. He responds to our strong-willed prayer because he, we, this is simply because when we are, we, we, we are not addressing our prayers to anyone else, but we are to address our prayer to our father, to our father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus moves from personal to communal. He makes us understand, or he rather demonstrates that we belong into the family. We are part of a bigger spiritual family. Therefore, there are more of us. I am not alone. Hence, hence John Wesley, when he speaks of holiness, he says there is no holiness, but social holiness, meaning that if there's any harmony between us and the children of God, therefore, then we, we must see, we, we cannot therefore say, we must not say our father, if you know that there is no harmony between you and the body of Christ, then we cannot say our father, our father. Many times, our prayers are hindered because we do not include our father's children in our sympathies. Many times our prayers are hindered simply because we are not directing our prayers 
to the one who gave us life. The second segment that I want to talk about is our Father in heaven. Our Father in heaven. This says to me, my brothers and sisters, that the God that we are praying to, the Father that we are addressing our prayers to, is the God who is above everything, the God who is transcendent, the God who is above his creation, yet only present, the God that I said can penetrate each and every corner, yet transcendent. Some of us do not even know where our earthly fathers are at this point in time, but we have guarantee, we have our assurance of where our God is. Our God is in heaven. That is where he dwells. That is where he lives. That is where he, pray, he, he reigns. That is where he is. So that is where our father is. That is where we know for sure that when we send our prayers, we send them to our father in heaven. The father who is omnipresent. The father who is transcendent. The father who has a dwelling place. The place that we can only reach not on our own. As Reverend Bamza said yesterday that we can only reach that dwelling place, that heaven, before the prayer. We cannot just come. We cannot just go to God. We go to God in prayer. A place, a heaven, is a place that is not demarcated for you and I. It's, it's God who's above yet not aloof. God who is above, yet not limited by time and space. The God who is immanent, the God who has relation with his creation, God who is in fellowship with those he has created. That is the immanent God, the infallible God, the God who, whose wisdom is unreachable and unsearchable, yet in relation with us. Yet in relation with us. He goes on to further, he goes further to say, High Lord be thy name. High, high Lord be thy name. Libizo lahai lechete. Ntata una yama hotimo. Libizo lahau. When I look at the term hallowed, it signifies that we are to sanctify, we are to praise, we are to worship the name of God, we are to treat it with the utmost reverence because, because his name is holy, because the God that we serve is holy. Fundamentally, this teaches us that the purpose of prayer is not about us. It's not even about our needs, but it is to glorify his name. This is the reason that Reverend Kamsa spoke about Paul and Silas when they were worshiping, when they were praising God. The Bible Says the foundation of prison was shaken to the ground, therefore the doors were open. That's what we do when we praise the name of God, when we say, Hallowed be thy name, Hallowed be thy name. Sometimes it's not even only about the things that we say, but we hallow the God's name in our actions. In our actions. This is why, this is why, see, 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 this is why Saint Augustine says, it is not the, the things that we say that we must preach. Yes, he says, use words if you must. Use words to preach if you must. But to hallow God's name 
is actually going with our messages is do good and do no harm to your fellow brother and sister. This comes naturally when we think of God's wonders and kindness in our lives. Actually, what we do, whether good or bad, whether good or bad, it either disfigures or distorts the name of God, or it either exalts and sanctifies the name of our Father. Hence, people would ask, hence, people would ask, whose child is this? Because whatever that you do outside your home, whatever that you get to be known of, you do not only represent yourself, but you represent your paternal figure or your paternal father. People therefore ask, whose child is this? Because you are either exalting your father's name or you are disfiguring the, your father's name because of your actions. The Jewish, they could not bring themselves to say God's name simply because the way, it, it, the manner that they understood that the name of God is holy. The name name of God actually was too holy to cross the lips of men. Therefore, they would not say his name. Meaning, this is the reason when, when, when I remember when my mother prays in the midst or in the, in the heart of God. My mother will not call Jesus or God by his name, but he will call. He will, she will actually pray and worship God because of the wonders and the kindness that she has experienced with God. She will call him by names. She will say, Katamacholo. Where we need 
to do the, the alignment of our cars, just so we make sure that we don't find ourselves involved in accidents. We need to get our cars aligned. This Because he, even in the circumstances that we are in, we may be wondering why, why, or where is God at times like this? But a father, a father that we spoke about, a father that God has restored the relationship between humanity and creation. The father who we are given or rather granted the permission to, do, to go directly to him is still that same father who is loving, who is caring, who is who, who longs for fellowship with his creation, who provides, who still guides, who still longs to, for them, for, for his creation to dwell in him. This is the opportunity that we are not to miss at a time like this. We need, therefore, to pray with a focus. We need to pray, to therefore pray with steadfast faith or unwavering faith. Remember that you move when Jesus used the prince, the, 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 the method of known to unknown, even though we do not know or get to see our father face to face, but we need to go to him with complete trust. We need to go to him with unwavering faith. We need to go to him with unmovable faith, simply because he is trustworthy simply because he is worthy to be praised, simply because he gives food and clothes to the unemployed. He gives food and clothes to the poor. He provides home, a home to the homeless. He takes care of the widows and the, and, and, and the orphans. He takes care. In fact, he speaks or rather he stands on behalf of those who are voiceless. He gives name to those who are nameless. He goes and gets those who are in the periphery. That is our father. He does not allow anything to happen to those that he loves. We go to pray. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. We therefore need to trust, to trust to trust in him, to trust in our father, in our father, the name amongst the name, the father who is in heaven, the father who is in a dwelling place, the father who we need to praise and sanctify his name. That is the father that I'm talking about. That is the father that we are here today, at this hour, at this minute, at this second, the father who has protected us this far, the father who has been our dwelling place, the father that we have been gathering under the harbor of his safety each and every day. We were out today to our for work, workplaces. Some of, our, some of our children went back to school, but we are back, we are back home safely. That is the father that I'm talking about. We ask Oslulekwa, that you please pray for us. Come, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Father God, we come before <laughs> this evening. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for this moment. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for Reverend Magella, for reminding us again, yet again, that we've got a Father who is in heaven, who is greater than any Father, Esibazio, on earth. Sibulela. Ukuba noba wafana nawe. Oba kona imishane zolo. Onga shiyo moyo ingwele. Oh, Father God, 
you remain our father, even if we go astray like the lost sheep. Umanulanda foot, emkondo anyway to moyo ingwele. Because we are fathered, moyo ingwele. We are fathered to come second. Every time moyo ingwele, Pastor City, our father who art in heaven, remind us moyo ingwele, ma asizenzeli moyo ingwele. We lift your name, Moyo Ngwele. We have to exalt your name, Moyo Ngwele. Masingi pe tikom seganga, makpagami kamala ko Moyo Ngwele. Kwindo yonge enzeka yo Moyo Ngwele. Help us to focus, Moyo Ngwele. Every time when you call your name, help us, Moyo Ngwele, to get it clarit. Every time when we call upon your name, every time when we say our Father who art in heaven, remind us, Father God, that you are the only Father that we can call, who listens to come that you are reminding us that you are the greatest teacher. Teach us, Lord, to pray. We must always City Father, teach us to pray. intentional about prayer. Through this prayer, Amen. Thank you, the community of Calvary. Thank you to each and every one of you who are here with us this evening. As we go, or rather, as we move on with our lives, let's take assurance, a guarantee, a promise that will never faint, that our Father is our Father. And we know where to find him, he is in heaven. We therefore need to always sanctify and worship and praise his name. Go in peace. <laughs> At Catos and its own highlights, <laughs> little Colona, Lebana Balloon, Mudimwa Hotto, Ampulu Kelelo, Ampulu Kelelo, a Crestamore. Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. Amen.